Yo guys, welcome back to the podcast. Today we're joined by my co-host, Hound Duexes. It's your boy Joe Rogan's big fat forehead. And we're also joined by um, Josh, also known as Joshua Films, or BB Poop Deck. Um, and Joshua Reviews. <laughs> Wait, is that a real thing? Yeah, yes. yeah, he does have a real thing. <laughs> that, 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 that is a real thing. I do have a channel called Joshua Reviews. It is technically my third channel to my Joshua Films account, because I actually have another channel called Joshua Films 2, where I make behind the scenes and bloopers. Why the fuck did I not know this? He has a creepypasta channel, I believe. Which, my creepypasta channel has <laughs> 1,000 subscribers. I'm dead serious. How many channels do you have? a video on the creepypasta channel of him about being molested by Squidward or something like that. <laughs> I have no idea I don't know if you can find it, but is. if you can, roll the clip of it. Uh, I have no idea what the hell the video that is. <laughs> I know it. I, go on his fucking creepypastas. One where he's talking about Squidward. Or something. What, what's it called? Uh, um, I don't know. He hounds pulling shit out of his ass. I don't know what the video I did not is. shy out my ass. You can go on his creepypasta channel and you'll fucking find it. And he says, my name's Fuckbob or something like that. Oh, right, right, right. that video! Now I know what yeah. you're talking about. That one is a Sponge joke Bob video. Wrote you that, no, that, that one was a troll pasta I read. I got a suggestion from a friend. And he's like, you can do this creepy pasta. And I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. That was just, you know, something. How did I shit that on my ass? I remember everything, man. So, Josh, you obviously yes. love films. I mean, Filmmaker. hey, what can I say? What got you into films? Well, as soon as my dog stops walking, I'll tell you. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Screw me. Uh, I guess whenever when I was young, uh, I didn't really want to know what I wanted to do. You know, just in general, I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up. And when I got a flip camera. I don't know when, probably like for Christmas or something. Uh, I was really, really, I swear to God. So <laughs> we just started recording uh, short films on our flip camera because we were bored and we didn't really know what to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw Chucky and a bunch of other horror films, and we started going to the park and making short horror films. Which were your favorite horror films? My favorite horror films? Uh, well, back then, you know, like Top Five or whatever. I don't know. Well, if Jaws counts, then that's my number one because uh, I Jaws is my all-time favorite movie. Jaws, Jaws is classed as a horror film, isn't it, Dom? Yeah, I mean, it should be. I don't see why not. Big fat fucking okay. shark in the ocean. A <laughs> 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 piece. Uh, it was the true horror. <laughs> Josh be like, yo, but, don't fat shame sharks. They did nothing no, to No, 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 no. I'm LGBT fat. community no, is I, fucking triggered right now. I don't do that. Shame anything. If you're fat, you're fat. So am I. Oh, uh, Anyways, so I don't know. Two would have to probably be um, Halloween, just because it's a classic and I like the score to it. Mm -hmm. I think it's a. Three would probably. I'd say the thing. Which one, the, re the, the remake or the, the old probably version? John, probably John Carpenter's. Ah, uh, okay. Number four, uh, I don't really have one, so I think I'll just say one. Probably Hereditary, because that one actually scared the shit out of me. <laughs> there was Go one ah. you recommended me, Lake Mungo. Yes, okay, that would have to be number five, Lake Mungo. That one was... Pretty creepy. It wasn't scary, but it was really fucking creepy. I'll give you that. What about Black yeah. Christmas? Well, which, which, one are we talking which, about? Which, which one are we talking about? The most recent one, which was the pinnacle of cinema. Oh my! No, God. I'm joking. The he's um, got, the original. He's got, he's got a fucking free on IMDb. So you know, shit. when I first saw that remake, I actually liked it, and then I saw it again because uh, Hound was telling me, "Dude, like you like that movie," and I was like, "No." I guess I didn't really, like, you know, go in to judge it. And then when I saw it again, I hated it. 
and I, I tell myself, seven, what, seven I, 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 tell, I tell myself, why did I like it? The original was really good, though. I, I loved it. I've seen it like two or three uh, times. Are yeah, we on about the, the original now or the new one? <laughs> the original was a classic. Like, I like how each Black Christmas got a really worse from each one. Like, you had the, you know, the original 70s one, you had the Harvey Weinstein remake one, and then you had the remake of that remake. Why does there need to be so uh, many remakes? I don't know. The 26 remake was... 26. Not... <laughs> 26. <laughs> 2006. Know, back in Bethlehem, we used to just... fucking watch it. I don't know. <laughs> You guys remember um, when the uh, the ancient Romans made the Black Christmas remake in 2680? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I said that. But, okay, the, the 2006 remake, you know, I own that one because I actually got it at Goodwill for like two bucks. And I watched it for the first time. And, you know, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't good. It was just kind of like... Like, okay. from the dead meat thing I saw it, it's got some decent gore and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, dude, the gore is really fucking graphic. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot more graphic than the original. There's a lot of eyes getting gouged out, which... Like, the 70s one was pretty PG, right? Because, you know, it's that type of time and stuff. I mean, it was violent, there's a lot of swear words in it and stuff, but... Ooh, swear words. But, you know, you know, you know, you know how mums be. Mums... <laughs> True, true, true. Um, just off topic, quite, well, not really off topic, but one I don't have written down. Um, so obviously, I collect Blu-rays, Hound collects DVDs. Do you have any kind of like movie collection, physical, digital? Well, in our living room, my mom uh, decided a while ago, because we have so many DVDs, she was going to get these uh, plastic... Uh, uh, like plastic things. I don't know what it was. Yeah, thank you, thank you. That's what I was trying to figure out, but uh, I forgot. So forgive me. Yes, uh, plastic cases. My mom decided to get plastic cases for our DVDs, and now most of our DVDs are put in plastic cases in a cabinet. Um, however, uh, some of my some of my films that I own, like horror movies, I keep in my room. So mm -hmm. I own uh, horror DVDs in my room. And the Blu-rays are in the next cabinet from the cases, so. Nice, nice. Yeah, we got cases, Blu-ray, and horror DVDs. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think to like obscure horror films? Like which ones are we talking about? Like the ones that just like you go like or like say around a store, you're looking around in the oh. DVDs and there's like these weird fucking films, but they're actually good. So the light like, obscure, like Lake Mungo is a good example of that. Um, you know, if they're if they're good, they're great. You know, I'll check them out. But I got at least like. Have you ever found any years. like that really good, but like you, nobody's ever heard of them type of thing before? <sighs> Jeez, probably like Mungo and what other one? I, I know there was one I, I saw a while back that I thought was good, but no one really talked about. We talking about like well. amateur films, or well, like... we're just talking about obscure films you've seen, like bargain bins or for sale for section, like, like for cheap. Like, but they're actually Ubi Ball. Good. Oh, we'll, we'll get to Uwe Ball. I'll <laughs> speak to it. Josh of all his opinions. We'll get to oh, Uwe soon. Oh, oh no! <laughs> Josh knows. <laughs> We'll get to him soon that enough, that Josh. We'll get to him soon. Half of the dead. Yeah, and uh, blood oh. rain. Oh god. When Michael Madsen was drunk through fucking all the production. <laughs> that is not even a lie. Fun fact about blood rain: it was originally co-wrote by the guy who did. Uh, oh, not a guy, girl, who uh, okay, co-wrote so... American Psycho. Fun fact. I actually have. A, I actually uh, do have a few. Uh, there is one I saw a while ago called uh, Husk, which is a 2011 film, and you know that that's fine to say. Husk or Tusk? In 2011, uh, there was this movie called Husk about a bunch of teenagers get lost in a cornfield, and a killer scarecrow attacks them. I remember I saw it. I'm like, maybe 
Amazon Prime Video or something, and I was like, no, this looks kind of interesting. I'll watch it for Halloween. So in like 2013, I watched it, and it was actually pretty good. Uh, it wasn't anything special, but it was good, and I thought that, you know, this one doesn't have a lot of attention, so I did a review on my uh, <laughs> Joshua Reviews channel. <laughs> no. I'm going to have to check that those channels out, because I thought you only had the two. Oh, yeah, no, I, have I, I, I have 11. The fuck, man? I think I, I featured I a, suggested I even... a film for one of your reviews, Josh. Good time? Yeah, good time. That's it, Robert Parson. Yeah, good time was a good time. And yes, I did steal that joke from you. The Cal. lighthouse the lighthouse was this is really fucking weird. Good film though. <laughs> right, so um question two. What camera do you use? iPhone eight. <laughs> <laughs> Aight, I'm about to jump out the fucking window. See you soon, Sunshans. <laughs> I'm kidding. So, um, do you ever plan on upgrading one day? Uh, yes, I do. Because I think recently, due to my negative feedback, I feel like I... You know... Okay, so I never really, like, knew that I was going to, you know want to be a filmmaker when I grow up so I think I just got so used to using my phone that I didn't really like look for new ways to record my films yeah, yeah I just kept that... using my my phone and it's been such a you know a, a thing now that I didn't even really care I was like you know I'm just, I'm just every time I make a movie I'm just gonna use my phone yeah you just kind of you know, like got I, used to it yeah and I think t towards 2018 when I actually made my first feature-length film uh Slender Man on my Josh Films account I I was like, you know, if I want to be a filmmaker, then I need to, you know, step up my game. But I guess since then, I didn't really, like, bother to look at cameras to get. I just kept using my iPhone, and I never really, you know, tried to get a different camera. But I think now with the criticism I've been getting from other people, it's like, okay, you know what? I'm going to get a new camera yeah. soon. Probably this Christmas or something. What kind do you think you'll get? Like, do you think you'll go, like, 1080p? Do you think you'll upgrade the 4K? What kind of brand? I don't know. Uh, probably Cameron, because my mom has that uh, camera. And I would really like to get yeah, one. Those saws are pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because uh, I don't really know any other camera than the one my mom has. Sweet, sweet. Uh, Hound, what kind of... You said you got a camera recently or something. What kind do you have? Canon DLSR. Yeah, DLSR. Oh, that's nice. Nice. So, um, I know you've said this in several videos, Josh, especially your update videos, but what are your plans for the future? I know right now you're taking a break to kind of improve yourself, but what do you have planned after you kind of come out of this hiatus? Well, I plan to work on the films I want to because, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, recently with my newest film, Jenga, uh, I didn't really plan to make a film like that at all. My friend, who uh, was uh, like a four-year supporter, he's been with me since I started my channel. Mm -hmm. uh, he recommended he, I make a movie about Jenga. And I'm like, I'm sorry, what? And he's like, yeah, you should make it about like, you know, two people. They play a game. You know, if, if one of them loses, they get killed off. And I'm like, okay, you know. It's not a feature-length film, but it's a short film, so I guess, all right, I'll do that. Mm -hmm. Thing is, he didn't really give me much description other than just, if you play the game, you die. So, and because I don't write scripts for my films, which is a mega issue with my films, mm -hmm. uh, I guess when we were filming, I just was like, hey, this mannequin head's creepy, you know, and I just put fake blood on it, and I'm like, hey, let's use the mannequin head as this ghost. Well, hey, let's not explain it in the movie. Let's just leave the, let's leave it up to the viewer to decide what's going on. And so my friend's like, hey, what if you, you know, made two endings? And, you know, I'm like, all right, I'll do two endings. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is quality stuff. So when I released it, I was like, wait, why did I release this? And then after that, I was like, oh. So, yeah, Django was a total. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, yeah. But for plans for the future, because I definitely don't want to make films like that. Mm -hmm. uh, 
obviously I'm going to try and improve, get a new camera, get new film equipment, get actual actors or people with film experience. Then, yeah, I'll just continue from there. Uh, but pretty soon I'm going to get in a film school when this whole virus thing blows over. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. Learn how to properly edit instead of just use iMovie. <laughs> and just, you know, go from there and see and see what the future holds for me. I still plan to make some of my future uh, feature length films. Like I promised everyone on my channel, I'd make the rake film and I still want to do that. But after that, I don't know if I want to continue. I'll mm -hmm. see where it goes from there. I might still use my friends uh, to help me film that one, but that's just because they uh, were in every single one of my feature length films. So I feel like, you know, it's kind of mandatory to be in those ones. So yeah, yeah. I'll see where it goes from there. Plus I don't think anything's wrong with, using your friends and stuff as long as they're like believable and that they really want to do it because I've I've used people in some of my movies before who I kind of like forced them like yo can you help me with this like please 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 and they just really didn't want to do it so I think you know if the person wants to be in it and there's like general enthusiasm for it, it should be like turn out better at least yeah but, um... I get it yeah yeah that's kind, of, that's kind of how it is for me. You know, sometimes I feel like it's always a chore with them, you know, because there have been times where I'm like, okay, we're like, we're going to, you know, I, I try to be a director and I'm like, okay, you guys are going to be over there and you're going to be over there. And then they'll, they'll like throw out suggestions for me. And I'm like, okay, okay. Like, you know, I'll take that into consideration. And then as soon as I, I tell them what to do, like, as far as I'm aware of what to do, they just start off by doing their idea. I'm like, whoa, 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 guys, like, let's film the scene I wanted to do first, and then I'll, you know, we'll maybe film the idea you gave me and see where it goes from there. But what's the my scene first? Yeah, sure. It's up. I thought you said you only do one take, so for the majority of movies, that's all. Usually, usually I do. Usually I do one so take. It doesn't really sound because... like you um, take a lot of their input if that goes with the logic there. No, I get it. No, I guess in my uh, update video, I did say I only film one take, which is true. I, I sometimes do film one take because, like I said, sometimes it can be, it feels like a chore, both working with them and them working with me. So, so I just... Do it just chill. Because I don't really have any other actors, unfortunately. They're, my friends are the only ones that I consider slash actors, but they're not actors. They're my friends, and I should know that but occasionally we would do what i just said you know sometimes they'll hand me a suggestion but sometimes they'll try and do their suggestion first instead of film my scene yeah i and hate when people kinda... do that like when i was when i used to film my one friend i won't say his name but he'd be like oh what if we did this or what if we do that we'd waste a whole day and then by the time we got to shooting it'd be dark and my camera can't film in the dark and like bruh yeah. Like, I hate when people do that. And because I have an iPhone, my battery, like, is always draining every time we're filming. <laughs> and so, like I said, um, they'll be like, hey, let's do my idea. And then when I actually film their idea, it's like they're not even in the, in the mood to, like, continue filming or they're not even in the mood to continue, like, doing other stuff that I had planned. It's like, well, wait, like, we're supposed to film the scene I said that we were going to film first, not your scene. Yeah, I know and that then they're like. Well. And then, and then sometimes my friends would be like, oh, well, my stomach's sick. Uh, I have a headache. I'm like, okay, you want ibuprofen that I have in my house? And he's like, no. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. Then, then don't complain. And then sometimes I'm I get to... Ill. I, okay, so how and I'm going to answer what you said. So sometimes this happens so much that I don't... I, to get what I need, I tell them... No, we're not going to do your idea. We're going to film my scene. And then after that, I just say, okay, we're done with this part because I don't want to make them feel like, you know, I'm constantly ne neglecting them. I want to, you know, make my actors feel like, you know, they're fine with doing it. But, you know, they're obviously not actors. Yes, I'm, that's like, I think that leads to uh, another question of um, Dom's. Wait. Which one? <laughs> you tell me. You've got the question list, mate. Well, the next one is a, a very important question. And Josh, like, I respect you, bro, but 
you know, you, you got to answer this next one truthfully, okay? All right. I'm like fine this, with that. This one, it, this is a make or break question, bro. This, this will be, this will impact your career, okay? Why do you wear the same shirt in every video? <laughs> uh, well, because of my, um, what's here right now? Fat body. Uh, <laughs> I don't have a lot of t-shirts, so... And some of my old t-shirts, which I would be fine with wearing, like, they'll be they'll be sitting in my closet, and I'll be like, you know, what shirt am I going to wear today? And then when I put them on, it's like, the blue oh, really matches you, with my eyes. Would you look at that? Josh was gaining a few pounds. Well, now the shirt doesn't fit anymore. Okay, time to wear the old same shirt I usually wear. And I would just wear those shirts because back then, my friends would be like, dude, why do you just wear a plain gray shirt? And I'm like, well, like, I don't have that many shirts, and I'm like, get a new shirt. So the shirt you've seen me recently been wearing in some of my films is one of the new shirts I bought so they'd shut up. <laughs> and I wear it so I guess they can say, you know, oh, like, hey, he's wearing a different exaggeration. shirt. Sorry to interrupt, but I think you've been wearing, wearing that shirt for a year straight and every movie. <laughs> no, I, I know because I, I know we got that shirt during summertime of 2019. I'm going to say, like, it's like you're playing the same character, just slightly different optional <laughs> clothing like maybe a hoodie extra but, you know well obviously I plan to not wear the same shirt in my films now but you know I've actually gotten a, a few sweaters and some new like clothing that I plan to wear in some of my new films so you got tuxedo yet? how about what? tuxedo no I do not <laughs> Why the fuck would he need a tuxedo? Yeah, like gay shower, <laughs> right, so, um... What are your thoughts on people's criticisms of you? You know... Especially that video. Mm, I you think, to, you know... Do you want to uh, say the, the guy's name, by the way? Oh, oh you mean Plumio? Yeah, I could care yeah, less about that. Alright. Yeah, well, people, there's a lot of criticism from people, and especially the Plumio video. Because that, that was well, kind of big. Yeah. Uh, one thing for sure is I definitely appreciate criticism. You know, that's actually one thing I've encouraged uh, when I actually... I'd say from 2018, I started encouraging criticisms so I can get better. But one thing that frustrates me a little bit is the fact that some people will just, you know dislike my videos just to be hateful not really like to give me criticism you know every time i'd receive a dislike i'd be like okay so someone disliked it and it usually be my, my friends i'd be like like why'd you guys dislike my videos was it like bad or something and they're like no i just did it to be funny it's like oh, i hate when people do that thanks thanks for that dislike yeah so but recently it's you know it's been like i've been getting more dislikes and you know people have been saying like oh this one's not that good i'm like Okay, that's fair. Like, you know, what was bad about it? You actually have a... Yeah. I would say so. It'd probably be Plumio or just a tip. I think it is just a tip, because um, you remember you showing me before the... Okay, so... Of, like, comments blocked or something. How do... What, what, what is you, you with Stan? Because he, he gives you a lot of hate. Okay, so... Still hang around with him, so... His what happened was... You know... Recently, uh, Just a Tip made a statement saying, uh, in a party, so, he basically said, he doesn't like his own project and yet releases it, and that's telling you something. And I'm like, okay, that's fair criticism, you know, that's a good point. So, I made a music video called Parade, I just did it as a silly little music video. I liked it, I liked my work, I thought it was decent. Is that and the got me to do lines for? Yes, that was. And that was so that true. I was trying to go to bed, and you're like, yo, can you do this line? So it'll take. Yeah. So, so when I released it, right away, I got a dislike. And I'm like, oh, joy. And then, like, mm -hmm. I'd say probably a few hours later, I got two dislikes. And as soon as I got those two dislikes, just a tip commented on my video uh, doing the poop emoji. And then later that day, uh, I talked to Danny, a friend of Just a Tips, and he said that him, Just a Tip. Wait, is he a little kid? 
the alien kid he's got an alien icon <laughs> yeah yeah I'm not saying yeah. he's an actual alien that'd be a bit weird no, I, I know um, but yeah that, that's him and that's he said racist that they all a bit watched... much hound <laughs> no it's no it's not like he actually wears an alien suit <laughs> I'm dead serious blow up alien suit this is not a joke he wears an alien suit 24 7 <laughs> Um, but no, so he told me that him, just Tip, and Flumio all watched the video, and obviously they didn't like it. And you know, I get a little bit frustrated when I see that just the Tip and Plumio are disliking my videos, you know, constantly like disliking them just for the sake of disliking them. Because I've even asked them myself, What do you think of my films? And they're like, Oh, it's shit. I'm like, Then why do you watch them? If you don't like my content, why do you watch them? And they're like, because we think it's funny. I'm like, oh, I get it. So you're just trying to be an asshole. <laughs> I mean, because that's pretty much what they do. They just come to my channel, dislike it, and they're like, okay, bye. It seems like you don't do much about it, Josh. It seems like you just let it happen. Well, when, they, when uh, Just the Tip commented that uh, poop emoji, uh, you know, it wasn't bad, but I got a little bit irritated when I saw the dislikes. So I actually blocked him from commenting any of my videos anymore. So we can't comment anything, but okay. I don't know if there's a way to, you know, block him from my channel. I don't know if that's possible. I don't think there is. I think it's just a hide users section. Also, and, you know, back to what you're speaking, um, oh, okay. Plumio. Mm. Overall, the video of Plumio, you know, I respect the criticism that he gave me. There, it's really good criticism. Uh, but overall, I think his execution, because he was pretty hurtful in that video, uh, that actually kind of got me, like, in general, I, that kind of... I'd like to agree with you there, Josh, but the comment section, <laughs> you're pretty much, um, giving him a bit, giving him a bit of love in the comment section. Who, me? Yeah. Well, no, I, that was because when I saw the video, it was like four in the morning, and I saw it, and I guess after I saw it, I, I had, like, you know, I had doubtful thoughts, like, should I be a filmmaker? Because that video actually really affected me. That video seriously affected me. And I got actually kind of emotional when watching it. Like, you know, he says in the video, don't, like, you know, take it as a joke. I'm like, that's not a joke. Like, that's you straight up, like, hating on me. And I actually got really, like, kind of offended by it. video was just hate? <clears throat> I... You know, in their own way, no, I don't think to them it was being hateful, but... No, I mean, do I you thought... see that video as hate? Purely as hate? Yeah, a little bit. Some part of me does, unfortunately. You know, I, I wish I could see the same, you know, humor they do, but I don't, you know? And I take things a little bit more offensively when it comes to that kind of stuff. Well, seriously? A, a no, little I mean, bit, you know? Yeah, you know, I... critici criticism, you know, I'm fine with... Like, you know, how do you given me criticism before? And I'm fine with that. But I think it's more when someone bashes you and at the same time criticizes you. It's like, that's not going to help you, like, get better. If you criticize them, like, saying, like, oh, you're shit and you're never going to get better. It's like, oh, gee, thanks. But if you're like, hey, dude, you know, I think that was bad about your film. But, you know, maybe take some classes. Maybe do some of that stuff. That can improve you. I'm like, okay, thanks. When so are, are you me, actually planning to take classes? Yes, I actually do. Yeah, he um, said he was going to do gonna... a, um, what was it, filmmaking, some acting class or something, didn't you say Filmmaking that? classes, acting, just anything in general that I can catch my hands on. Yeah. But, yeah, you know, but after the after um, I saw the Plumio view, I made the comment explaining myself, and apparently Plumio hearted it. But after that, I talked to my mom about it, and my mom's like, you know, just don't let you know him get to you, don't let it like emotionally affect you and I'm like, all right, all right. So after that I kinda you know, just kinda thought about it. I'm like, you know what, like it's just a it's just a video that he made, you know. I shouldn't worry about it too much, you know. Obviously people are not gonna like my stuff. People in general can be hurtful and hateful. So you're always gonna get people like that no matter what you make. Yeah. But Josh, always... do you think your Joshua Films content is good content? I like to think maybe a few of my films are good, but overall, I don't know. I no, it's a yes and no question. You ever think you're good or not? Probably not, unfortunately. Which is a shame no, because I, I, I upload. This is the way I think of it, Josh. I mean, YouTube, for many people of our generation who want to get into filmmaking, it's a training ground of sorts. 
my content's not the best. It's pretty cringe, especially the live action shit that I do. But all you can really do is just accept constructive criticism and try to perfect your craft as best as you can. So like, it's criticism, like, like saying, okay, you could improve it by doing this, but saying it's shit, and nothing else is don't really improve. Out. So I mean, I, I like your films, Josh. I think they're pretty good. I mean. They remind me of the films that I used to do that I've never really uploaded when um <laughs> I first started, like when I first got my camera and stuff. But I mean, like you said, with your resources and your actors and your like f budget and stuff, you don't have much of one. I mean, you're just working with what you got, and I think that's yeah. pretty. That's good in itself. And I mean, I don't think people can be too harsh on you because I mean, you're not. Well, you'd, you'd be surprised. <laughs> Are we allowed to um, talk about your new project that's, that's in the work? Yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm fine with talking about the door. So yeah, is the, the door, door is the door is supposed to be the big comeback of yours. Pretty much, yeah. Because uh, I think big that might be. Brand. I that's either going to be the first film I uh, decide to work on and upload to my channel. Is this the um? Right? Is, is this the, the James McAvoy movie? No, this is not. <laughs> uh, no, it's supposed to be a psychological horror. That's yeah, yeah, this is, this is so, the James McAvoy movie. Don't, don't tell him the actual, you know. Yeah, what the <laughs> fuck, man? You're giving out spoilers, bro. You haven't even fucking written the script for it. Okay, okay. So, fucking cunt. Okay, I'll give a quick summary of the story. Basically, it's, um, depending on who I get to, you know, act for this film, whether it be me or someone else. Well, this will have a budget. Yeah, this one will definitely have a budget because I want this one to be really good. It'll basically be about this, uh, what, are, what are they called? House, it'll, be, it'll be about this house sitter who uh, gets a call from this old lady who tells him, hey, can you watch my house for the week? He's like, yeah, sure. But the thing is, she's like paying him like a lot of money to house, and he's like, you know, what, what is she like? A bit like a, a, a bit like an unrealistic amount. Yeah, unrealistic so like amount. So, okay. so, we get, yeah, so he gets there, and she's like, okay, you know, that's that. You know, give him a quick tour. And then she points to a door and says do not under any circumstances open that door he's like well, what's through that door you don't want to know and after that he agrees to uh house at the house and but at night he starts to hear like voices and he starts to see things and throughout the film we're wondering what you know is this is that maybe the door calling him is it maybe something in his head or maybe is the house haunted? Like, we don't know. And we'll have to watch the film and see where this is goes. It's like a pretty ambiguous thing. Yes, it's pretty ambiguous. I think it sounds pretty good. If you pull it off, like, you know, if you have decent shot setups, like lighting and stuff, and believable acting, because I doubt with the acting of your films, it would not work as a psychological horror. Like, you know, snake farm acting in that type of thing wouldn't work. Well, hey, Snake Farm is a film I am not fucking proud of. <laughs> what the hell is I Snake really Farm? I made it... It's literally... It's just literally okay. running around shooting giant so, green screen snakes. During the summer, what my, fa what my family usually does is we usually go out to Oregon, because we live in California. We go to Oregon for a family reunion, and I have my two cousins, Joshua and Josiah. Uh, through every time I would meet up with them, we'd always make a short film. Of some kind, like we made a film about dinosaurs, a film where they get kidnapped and they and they gotta escape, a film about during a zombie outbreak. We made a bunch of films, and one of the ones that I decided we were gonna make this year was Snake Farm. And I didn't know what I wanted to do with the project. I was like, hey, let's just run around with a bunch of BB guns and shoot snakes. And I literally went <laughs> to YouTube and I'm like, I'll type in snake green screen, and what? I just found a all of that, Back to all that the... Plumio video, he, he he made a good point that like you really don't put much effort into your green screen. It was like the first or second result of a green screen snake. <laughs> it was, and it was like the thing is, it was overlaying. It was just an overlay, so it, like your hand would be. It looks uh, like it's not there. The like snake when he's shooting you know, it for some reason. Obviously, when I made it, I was like, you know, this is good. This is good. Like I I, I can't officially say that when I made it, I thought it was good. But now yeah. looking back on it, it's like, it looks like it's floating. It looks like it doesn't even look like it's there. It's like, 
Oh, it's, I, I, it's not bad necessarily to use green screen effects if it's used correctly. If like, it's used correctly. Uh, do you remember the... I did that machine I did back in the day, the one with the aliens? Ascension? Yeah. Yeah, Ascension. There was that green screen effect. So that was actually really good. Like the... Yeah, I, I, went and, I went and did like about half an hour digging the green screens and I found um, that that one. It's pretty decent effect. So um, I'd like to use this podcast as an opportunity to announce um, Joshua Films and Orange Domino Studios' uh, collab project together called um, Eraserhead. <laughs> and um, this was actually confirmed two days ago. And I will be loaning Josh $350. It's <laughs> not true. It's not true. Yeah, yeah. that is... Uh... That's unfortunate. Now, I remember posting that in my story, and Hound's like, Dom, are you seriously going to do this? Dom, Dom, like, bro, no, it's it's a joke. The, the other one, you made a freaking pearl. You were the Why one who worry? made the poster for it. I didn't make a poster. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't I'm... make a poster, I just like, oh, Josh's hair is quite spiky. He looked like man from Eraserhead. So I made an edit and posted it in the group chat as a joke. I woke up at 4.50 like, in the morning. I opened up the Instagram chat. I see this Eraserhead poster with Josh. I'm like, what the fuck? It's not a poster. It was just a picture of him with the Eraserhead logo. <laughs> Got off David Lynch. <laughs> David Lynch kek memes. Yo, who's who's a better director? David Lynch or Uwe Bull? <laughs> Let's talk about Uwe Ball. Josh, what's your opinion on that uh, director, Uwe Ball? Shit. I've I've never even heard about him until today, so I don't I don't have an opinion on him. No, just give us like a run about Uwe Ball, Josh. He uh makes shit films. <laughs> Some great rant. You know, I could say myself that, you know, I didn't, you know, want to be harsh on him. And then when I saw House of the Dead, I knew that this guy was something special. I, get, and then I he, think you'd get along with him quite well. Ooh. Oh, well, you are just a nice man. He There's is literally made... a video on his YouTube channel, Uwe Ball, which he just says, fuck you all. <laughs> what? <laughs> on Joshua's channel? No, no, on Josh's Uber Balls channel. Because <laughs> no one crowdfunded his postal 2 movie. <laughs> he made a movie called In the Name of the King. I've got that on DVD so... up here. <clears throat> it was something. Then he made In the Name of the King 2. And then 3. You, and please... then made a parody of his own film. Blubberella, have you seen it? No. That's one of I his... want to. <laughs> you heard of it. That's I've one of his of movies. <laughs> the movie's so consistent with its time. A it's set in 1914, and like, in the first scene, there's a laptop in it. Why? Do like... Come oh on my now. god. Like, I know he's got a f 5 million budget, but really, that, that, that prop design, though? I mean, it would take it basic f functioning brain to know that laptops weren't around back then. That's like doing a Red Dead 2 movie and having iPhones iPhones and airplanes to Tahiti. I will say one thing though. Uwe Ball has made one good film. And what is that? Rampage. Well, well good for him. Now the final question, Josh. How much? How? How are you? Fucking cannot talk. How much longer are you going to do GTA Five movie machinimas? Hopefully not for long. Joking, Jesus Christ! Put you down the pitchfork. <laughs> I, I, I didn't even pay attention to what you said, Hound. <laughs> uh, probably for either two, maybe three years. Two or three years of more. Yeah, that's, that's two or that's three it. years. Don't you think the engine will be like you know, out outdated by like then? Like I said, be maybe that is a, uh, you know, that's just me of saying you know I'm fine with doing it until then. But you know, if something changes like 
GTA 6 comes out, and you know they got the same kind of system with Rockstar. Today, no, I mean, movie. don't you think the engine's outdated graphically wise? The Rockstar, isn't it? you know, that might be true, but people still come back to watch it. You know, people still watch GTA movies like all the time. It's like, yeah, I have to give, I have to give Josh for that. Though. Wait, what? It's like, because like with Prologue and Orange Trick, they're still getting a decent amount of views per week. And per month compared to like my other projects. Yeah, no, I've, this. Wait, go ahead. I've like <clears throat> I was holding my breath for some reason. Like, I've enjoyed it for what it is, but I, if I've pushed it so far with the limits, I'm gonna keep you know making lackluster shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cthulhu was the last thing. It was supposed to be just at, just trying to build a decent atmosphere. Because mm -hmm. I know the game ain't graphically pretty anymore, so that's why I put the black and white filter and cropped it. Yeah, I got to help the film. The film was really good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we were all in it. Very, very nice, yes. I think Josh was did a little. Yeah, Josh was a sentient iPhone. In the <laughs> I played a uh, Chad apparently. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You play Chad, Chad the sentient iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> like, maybe, I like how maybe. in the movie there's like no, the phone screen's just on the normal tabs thing. Yeah, I know. It's not even on like a phone icon. So it just looks like the phone's talking. <laughs> Hell 9000. <laughs> you know, like the main... <laughs> Pretty much. Like schizomeds not taken. The whole movie was on drugs, but in a good way. Yeah, I know. The ending, though. What What did you think to the Cthulhu's ending, Josh? What What did you think? You want You want to know what I think? What? It was really good. Some, Thank someone you. enjoyed it a little too much. <laughs> that was me <laughs> clapping. Oh, my hands! <laughs> <laughs> you got a damn mind on you, boy. <laughs> oh shit! Am I bad? <laughs> what, what's people been watching TV series wise lately? Um, Vikings. Vikings. Okay, I've been watching Westworld, which Stephen Ogg is in. What about you, Josh? Do you not you, watch Josh? TV? Uh, you know, I don't really watch that much TV. I guess the only show I've been watching recently is a uh... Bible class. No, <laughs> no, I mean, no, not. I think the only show I've been watching Christ is Netflix. Thirteen mm. Reasons Why. Season. I am Gabriel. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching. I've been watching Thirteen Reasons Why season three oh, for two reasons. I am Gabriel. Uh, season four. <laughs> and I, I, uh, well, I used to watch that show with my friends, so. Very nice. There was one time Josh tried to get me into um, Victoria, whatever her name is. Oh, Victorious, yeah, it's a Nickelodeon. Yeah, that's it. Oh, I didn't try to get you into it, I just told you about it that you should maybe watch an episode or two because they're pretty funny. The difference is, I'm not born in America, so I really don't get American humor. <laughs> Man fall over. That is funny. Well, you got that one. You got that one joke where those guy ballerinas. Yeah, because you, you made it on funnier than it was. Ballerina. Yeah, because you made it funnier than it was. That was something. I still have that. That was clip. something. Josh, what is your favorite Lovecraftian horror? Probably Cthulhu, because that's the only one I've heard. You you never heard any of the Lovecraftian horror stories. Do you charge? That moment when Hound doesn't like Victorious. <laughs> Hold up. This Fuck. is my way of getting back at you, Hound. You don't like Victorious? I don't know. <laughs> is that the clip of Josh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <he is> <laughs> That's another question. Why do you have to tape on the handgun? Okay, so it was the only prop gun I have. And I know, but you're, like you're having an emotional scene where you no, suicidal no, 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 listen, thoughts listen, listen, and you put listen, a taped gun to your listen, head. Listen, 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 listen. The thing is, because I live in California, you can't buy another toy prop slash whatever gun on yeah, like on Amazon. Amazon. No, no, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I got, I can back Josh on this. Um, 
The reason why I use Nerf guns and stuff in my live action films is because you cannot buy a BB gun or prop gun of any sort in the state of is New Jersey. Is this a different skull shoe or something? We don't really yes. Get them yes. California is really like fucking freaking out over it. They don't allow you to buy guns on Amazon. So, well, the thing is, I actually did find a gun that that would allow to ship it to my location. The thing is, I haven't gotten it yet. Are you allowed uh, to use airsoft weapons? No. No, no, not in here in, in New Jersey because, in, uh, like, uh, with not, not in California too. He can't. No. But the, okay, but the, the reason I uh, the tape is on the gun is because I'd say about a year ago when we were filming uh, my Halloween three fan film, which in itself was pretty bad. Uh, my friend threw me the toy gun, and it broke. So it's the tape it to keep just, it together. It's tape to keep it together, and. I don't have any other gun, and I do not use Nerf guns because, you know, obviously I want to be more dramatic, but if you have tape on your gun, then that's telling you something. And I tried my best throughout the year to hide it with, you know, covering it with my hands, but it You could have put, like, black work. paint on it or something with the tape, it'd at least make it, you know... Yeah. But this is, unfortunately, every once in a while, I have to replace the tape because the tape wears out. All right, that's that that that's the mystery of why Josh tries to kill himself with a tape handgun. But yeah, it really another, another sucks though because like with the BB you guns, you can't you can't I can't buy any, so I have to use these fucking. And even if you get seen with the BB gun in this state, you will get in trouble with the law. So that's I got to. So stupid. It's so. I, mean, I get I get why, but but it's, it's not like... really stupid if you think. I mean, oh, it's warranted, but for filmmakers, it fucking sucks. Look, it's stupid because it's like, if it has an orange chip, then you should know. Like, I, yeah, I one time had like, the a orange of... part, the top part black, they're not going to know the fucking difference. You you point that as a police officer, they'll gun you down. Yeah, Don't that is that instant five stars. Yeah, but they're no different. They don't know the difference. All they see is a kid with a gun. Well, one time I actually filmed a movie, one of my older films that I deleted for being really bad, like horrendously bad. Wait, well, I actually what, had a... Yet you keep the 9-11 movie up. Wait, well, the, what? No, There's a 9-11 no. movie? Okay, so yeah, back uh, back in like, I'd say 2017, I made a 9-11 short film. Lumi was going to make a part two with all this exposure coming Well, guess what? Like... He can't because I privated the video and I actually plan on deleting it soon. Oh man, I was going to look it up. No, don't. I've... You put it's... it on listed. I watched it. I remember watching. Pretty much, Josh is in his freaking blue shirt at a desk. There's like stock footage of the 9 11 happening. <laughs> and he puts like this really bad shake effect. Like the building oh, shake. It looks like he's really is that scared. later in the film, my friend Joshua has an iPhone calling someone saying, Are you okay? <laughs> you have a 9 11 in the beginning of the video. In the beginning of the video. He pulled a new bow. In the beginning <laughs> What should we both think? Josh, no, you want to hear something ball. worse? In the beginning of the video, I stated we respect what happened. God yeah, we respect it. The thing is, Josh, the desk was so lazy you could tell it was in a house. Look, what, like, what can you say, man? I, I don't know. Like, it, I, that's the second worst 9/11 thing I've seen. Firstly, beaten by uh, I fatalities one with a thumbnail of Bush. And okay. <laughs> That was... And I, I read the comments on that, and he said, he was asking him, why did you do that? And he says, oh, my views. You're kidding. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Go on the video. Oh, no. You, you asked him it. something on the lines of, you, you shouldn't really do that man with the thumbnail. Something on the lines of that. And he responded like, oh yeah, I just um, wanted more views. <laughs> something like that. How long has 9-11 been? Almost 19, oh, 19 years, isn't it? Hey guys, it's uh, Joshua Films. Go subscribe to my other channel, Josh, for reviews. I have 10 Oh my god, he sounds like he's two. Have, but, um... So it does exist. Oh my god, no Halloween ages party. Well on YouTube. What the fuck? What is this thumbnail, I Josh? Say, I want to talk about this, Josh. You get invited to a lot of Halloween events from your review channel. There was one you was telling me called 13 Doors. What the fuck, Josh? Josh, what the fuck is this? What are you watching? Oh my god, a Halloween party official movie trailer? 
Okay, that is the best <laughs> video I have ever made. Holy shit! <laughs> Boom! That's a child! <laughs> like, you legit, you take your shirt off and you bend. What the fuck is this? This is very questionable. Oh, I'm gonna send in the chat. Yeah. Hound, you gotta see this. Oh, Dom, you gotta put, post this in the podcast, man, so the views get a context. Oh, I'm shit in, man, roll it. There is something I do want to say. Sure. Alright. Um, okay. Uh, so, I have a channel called Project Zero. Uh, which oh, is, right, it's uh, just self promotion. Get this, wrap it up. No, no, wrap no, 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 this is our sponsor. This is the sponsor. <laughs> Josh, you get to say the channel if you pay us. Try the NordVPN. No, no. Uh, no, 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 no. You want to know what I want to do next? Well, this is actually something I'm going to do next. Um, for my next, it's not really uh, something I'm filming, but a while ago I made a series. You know, have you guys heard of Marble Hornets in your like Tribe 12 of Slenderman? Hell yeah. I know Marvel Hornet. Okay, they did, like, well, they did the Slenderman thing. Yeah, well, a while ago, I'd say like in 20. 16, uh, me and my friend Kevin, we decided to make a short uh, web series about every single creepypasta that, that comes out and attacks them, and, you know, it's over like an hour long of footage, so what I'm doing is I'm going to get it all together and release a full-fledged movie of it, like it's are you like essentially just a TV series, but together, and I'm going to nice release it on Joshua Films. Are you remaking it, or are you uh, just releasing old footage? I'm both going to... I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an assortment of you want uh, to combined. Things you, you've improved, you know, and you don't want to be downgrading. Well, yeah, but this is something I've had, like, an idea for a while. And I'm obviously going to, I'm obviously going to remake some of the terrible footage. But uh, what I want to do is I want to, uh, because there, there is some part of the series that is cut out because it was really bad. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that footage out. I'm going to remake it because in the first video i'm really young so i'm gonna like explain it you know i'm like i'm older or something so it'll make it better but i just wanted to let that get that out of the way so you know yeah, people know good. what to stay tuned for I have, a new, I have a few criticisms for your movies sonic.exe wait the new one or the original because i made an original and that one was terrible the new one that's pretty terrible bro you have to bring this up as we're wrapping it up yeah, well, it's on my mind now. It's come out, and I'm gonna say the plush one, where you make the villain in the movie as a plush Sonic. That's in the creepy pasta. That wasn't me. That's in the creepy pasta. It's literally a fucking plushie. I'm oh, dead serious. Was... In the creepy pasta, you know, sometimes it says words don't really go to film. Do you know, like Stephen King's novels that get changed a bit to film because some parts. Well, every boring. other fan film has done that, so I thought, you know, I'm gonna pay respects to it and just do it that way. And it's not really like, you know, Sonic.exe, it's just like, I guess you can My say the Sonic spirit of it. murdered me. Free M challenge. <laughs> it is. The creepy boss overall is dumb, but, you know... Is it one of the creepy least... bosses, like, who is fun? I guess it... The fuck is that story, and where do I read Look it? Look it up when you wrap Who is like, phone? And one last thing, Josh. What, it, what is like? your favorite Uwe Ball movie? Okay, does House of the Dead two count? Because he didn't he didn't direct it he didn't direct it but it's a essentially a part of his don't series. Count, don't count. So, if it's directed by Eric yeah, Ball, don't count. You can probably rampage because that's the only one I saw a little bit of and I actually liked. It wasn't that bad. It was kind of like a maybe like a C minus. I tried movie. watching the name of the king. I got bored for all the way through it. It's just. Yeah, I found it on a fucking car boot. It was 50p. Okay, so, Orange, you gonna wrap it up? Yeah, man. Um, thank you guys for watching this podcast. Um, it was interesting, to say the least. If you leave a like, Dom will actually get a sponsor. Yeah, um, you guys, I'm desperate for cash right now. You okay, know. before you go, before you go, let me tell you about Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends <laughs> is about a mobile game that you can play. It's free to download. <laughs> Drake killed him. One minute, I'll have to finish off this chant. Let me just get my iPhone out. Raid Shadow Legends. What, why is Raid Shadow Legends actually? I've never played the game. Raid Shadow Legends is an RPG.
I. Who was this? The fitness gram pacer test is an aerobic capacity test. Oh, oh. shit. No, Uwe Ball. No. <laughs> no. No, no, no. I don't want to be in the house of the dead. No. No, no.